we want to solve the initial value problem where we're given y prime equals 2xy minus 4x and y of zero equals five. We're also told the differential equation is separable, so we'll solve the differential equation using separation of variables, which means we want to write the given differential equation in the form where we have a function of y times dy equals a function of x times dx. Once we have it in this form, we'll integrate both sides and solve for y. Let's begin by replacing y prime with dy dx. So we'd have dy dx equals, let's go ahead and factor this right side. Notice how the greatest common factor would be two x. So we'd have two x times the quantity y minus two. And now let's write this in differential form so we can think of multiplying both sides by dx, which would give us differential y equals two x times the quantity y minus two times dx. Now we want the factor of y minus two on the left with differential y. So now we'll multiply both sides of the equation by one divided by the quantity y minus two. Notice on the right side, these factors of y minus two simplify to one. So now we have one divided by the quantity y minus two times differential y equals two x times differential x. Notice how now we do have a function of y times dy equals a function of x times dx. So now we'll integrate both sides of the equation and solve for y. The antiderivative of one divided by the quantity y minus two with respect to y would be natural log absolute value of y minus two we would have plus a constant, but we'll also have plus a constant on the right, so we'll only put plus c on the right. So this will be equal to the antiderivative of two x with respect to x, that would be two times x squared divided by two plus, let's call it c sub one. So now we have natural log absolute value of y minus two equals x squared plus c sub one. Now to solve this for a y, we can take two approaches. Natural log has base e, so we could write this log equation as an exponential equation, meaning e raised to the power of x squared plus c sub one must equal the absolute value of y minus two. Or we can exponentiate both sides of the equation, meaning e raised to the power of natural log absolute value of y minus two must equal e raised to the power of x squared plus c sub one. Let's take this approach for this example. Notice on the left here, because we have base e here, and we also have natural log, which is also base e, this simplifies very nicely to the absolute value of y minus two, but since the right side here is always positive, we can drop the absolute value and just write y minus two equals e raised to the power of x squared plus c sub one. But because we're adding the exponents here, we can write this as a product, meaning we can write this as y minus two equals e to the x squared times e to the power of c sub one. But e to the power of c sub one is just a constant, so let's let c equal e to the power of c sub one. Therefore we can write this as y minus two equals c times e raised to the power of x squared. And now to solve for y, we'll add two to both sides. And notice how y would be a function of x. So let's write this as y of x equals c e to the x squared and then plus two. So this would be our general solution, but because you know y of zero equals five, we can now find the particular solution to solve the initial value problem. So if we know y of zero equals five, when the input or x value is zero, the output or function value is five, which means we'd have the equation five equals c times e raised to the power of zero squared, that'd be e to the zero, which is just one, plus two. Since e to the zero is equal to one, if we subtract two on both sides, we'd have three equals c times one, or just c. So if we know the value of c, we now have a particular solution. 
we know that y of x equals c, which we now know is three, times e raised to the power of x squared plus two. This would be our particular solution, or the solution to the initial value problem. Before we go, let's go ahead and graph this on the coordinate plane with the slope field that corresponds to our differential equation. So we have the slope field graphed here in red, where the slope of each segment represents the slope of the tangent line to a solution at that point. Also notice how if y of zero equals five, our solution should contain the point zero five highlighted here in green. Notice how our solution graphed here in blue fits nicely in the slope field, meaning the segments do seem to represent the slopes of the tangent lines at points on the function and our solution also passes through the point zero five, verifying that our solution is correct. I hope you found this helpful.